This is Right Hand Drive, guys. Episode 16. Today we're going to talk about our experience with Albo. A day with Albo, actually. Yeah, a whole day. A whole day with the man. So, uh, I had been following Albo for quite a while, and I had noticed that he put up a little advertisement for some experiences he was doing in Japan. Did you ever see that? No, I didn't. Uh, I had heard of him, like, just kind of seeing posts on youtube and instagram here and there but didn't really follow him or anything necessarily at first so so he had posted about because if you don't know who albo is um look him up on instagram it's albo media and he currently lives in japan he's from toronto canada and he moved over to japan do you remember how many years ago he said i want to say something around 10 years ago yeah like quite a while so um, he had moved there, and he was doing some English teaching, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, so that's a lot of guys that we common, met. Common theme with you know some people that we met over there is that they went to Japan to teach English. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Right. And so anyways, I had noticed Albo's experience, um, you know, post like a week before we went to Japan, and I was like, wow, I was like, this would be a great way to be able to experience Japan with, like, a guide, so to speak, that is, like, you know, an OG over there as far as, you know, an English-speaking guy that's done a lot of stuff. Right, definitely made things more comfortable, you know, like going into some of these restaurants or some of these spots. It's like, okay, we got our guy here that understands what's going on. Yeah, he was, like, a fast track. Right, right, right. He he skipped, like, a bunch of stuff that we would have been hung up on. Right. So, um... I hit up Albo. I booked the experience for a day that we were, you know, had like a down day when we were in Japan. And he, of course, was all about it and was very prompt in making sure that we understood what was going to be going on and where we'd meet and whatnot. And so kind of the day came up and uh, we decided we would stay at a hotel instead of in the camper the night before right. so that we weren't all stinky and nasty when we got to meet this guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we didn't want our first impression to be smelly and <laughs> Smelly greasy. Americans. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, it was, uh, I believe it, wasn't it, was it a Thursday or a Saturday? I believe it was a Thursday. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And so... um. We were supposed to meet up at like 9 a.m. at uh, one of our favorite parking areas, Abina. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we ended up being kind of late because we underestimated the time it would take. Right, right, golden week traffic. Yeah. Was so a pain at some, um, some points. And then he ended up also being late because of the same type of thing. Right. And so we ended up meeting up at 10 a.m. Um, at Abina. And then he introduced us to the melon pond. Right, right. He said, uh, yeah, let's go inside real quick. We'll check out this little bakery. And this place is kind of famous for these like these uh, sweet breads, I guess you could say. Yeah, and, I call uh, it that. Yeah, and it's called a melon pond because it looks like a melon, but it tastes nothing like melon. It's like this sugary, sweet, like... I don't know, kind of like dessert bread, I would say, but like they eat it all the time. It's like their favorite snack. It's their, you know, all the kids love it. Like it's, you know, definitely. They have like marketing around it and like a little mascot that's one of those like things, but with eyes. And if it is just like, it's pretty wild how they do stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was good too. Like it was, I mean, whenever you're biting into something that's green and it's bread, you don't expect it to be like, so good so good and sweet and whatnot but like it was on point and i'd already had breakfast dude and i was still trying to shove that thing down oh it was me so too delicious. <laughs> yeah i had a bag full of other pastries that i had just gotten before he showed up right right and then he showed up and said let's go in here and i end up eating the melon pan well, instead of all the stuff i had bought right yeah so yeah no that that was a uh, pretty cool just he really introduced us to some of the like local stuff that we just would have skipped over right i would have had no idea you know and that's like what the hell is this green bread i had seen it right why are so many people in this line for this (laughs) green bread green bread like what's going on here but the way he explained it it was like oh okay that makes sense that's pretty cool you know that's just like their thing you know 
Americans wait in line for chicken sandwiches. They wait in line for sweet bread. It's, yeah. You know, it's it's all good. Yeah, right, right. So, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. I ended up actually, in the days following our experience with Albo, I ended up having that like two to three more times. Oh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. That, that was the parking area we stayed at. And you Every time I was like, I look up and you're eating this melon pot. I'm like, all right, dude. <laughs> I didn't you miss Albo. Yeah, yeah, it was good, though. So... Um, at that point, uh, he was ready to like get it moving, which we were too. We were excited to experience the day. Yep. And so he was bringing us over to Hakone uh, to do some toge. That was our first little um, thing for the day. Yeah. Uh, and so it wasn't too, too far of a drive. I honestly can't remember the distance, but I didn't feel like we were on the road for... It was no more than an hour. Yeah. I mean, probably about 30 minutes, we started getting into, like, the mountain area. Yeah. And then probably another 30 minutes up the mountain, we were, you know, in the heart the of the area. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one thing, and see, this is part of having Albo, where it's really quite the asset, is he's like, hey, what's your tire pressure at? And I'm like... Uh, <laughs> whatever top rank put it at, <laughs> right? Right, yeah, 40 pounds, yeah. It's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they use bar over there, yeah, right? he's used to the bar. So he brings us to a gas station that has you know the whole air set up, and you know, I start checking them, and then all of a sudden, the boys show up, yeah, yeah. There was, uh, you could definitely tell that we were around somewhere where some driving took place because there was just random cool cars driving by. And specifically when we were at this gas station, a group of Caterhams pulled in, you know, if you don't know what a Caterham is. What's a, cater- a catamaran? What is that? <laughs> it's a, it's uh it's like a, it's like a roadster, like an open wheel, two seater, like no top, super light car. I'm pretty sure they have some sort of motorcycle engine. Oh, wow. Uh, but yeah, they rip. And these, old Japanese dudes, three or four of them pulled in and they got, you know, semi slicks tires on them. And yeah, they looked they, wild. They've been out for the day already. You know, they've been hitting the toge probably all morning cause they were coming down the mountain while yeah. we were going up. <clears throat> so it was cool to see that. And you're like, okay, we're actually in like where this shit takes place. And that's like, we're in the spot. Yeah. We're, we're this is legit. He brought us to like an awesome place. And so, yeah, seeing those was was really cool. Just like checking out the the way that they put them together and how much pride they had. Right, like, right. You could just tell, like, yeah, they probably just had a blast. Right, and I've I've personally never seen that many all together in one place. You know, I might see one or so at a random cars and coffee or a picture of one online, but to have like a group of three or four of them, it's pretty pretty cool to see. Quite a few, yeah. So. Yeah, my tire pressure ended up being like 10 times too high. Yeah. Like yeah. my tires were about to pop. Right. So we reduced the pressure, made sure we were all fueled up because yep. he said that t- typically you use like a tank on the toge. Right. On a good day, you're going to use a full tank of fuel and you don't want to get caught up there without it. Right. So we filled up and we continued to head up the mountain. <clears throat> um I mean, at this point, he, we're we're kind of like getting into it, and there's still a decent amount of traffic where we are. We right, kind of right. have to wait our turn, slow down so that we have a gap, you know, like all of the things you got to do when there's some traffic. But then we kind of broke through that. I right, feel right. like we got yeah. to a point where there wasn't much. Right, and also like, at the same time, like when we were in those slower spots, um, when we initially started, he had gave us a walkie talkie so we could talk back and forth with him in his car and whatnot. And he would just give us these random facts. About yeah, it was cool <laughs> throughout the way. Like for instance, uh, there was a family Mart that was like at the base of the mountain and the family Mart is like a convenience store and their logo is blue and yellow and, or blue and green rather. And this particular family Mart, their logo was just straight green because it wanted to blend in with the environment and the surroundings and stuff and just like little things like that. He would always just, you know, rattle off and I'm like, that's cool. Like he doesn't consider himself a tour guy, but he definitely could be the way that he knows all these little facts. Right. Right. It's pretty cool. I'm like, 
this guy knows. <laughs> like yeah, he just yeah. knows all these cool facts and like little things that most people don't or right. wouldn't even realize. Yeah, and if you like, didn't know him, you wouldn't maybe be missing out on anything, but like it really adds to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um so yeah, that was pretty cool and I mean the view following him was pretty sick the whole time because he has if you don't know him he has an amazing s2000 yeah yeah it's like it's a sick car yeah i mean it's it's definitely sweet he's put a lot of love into it he got it all stock now it's like all decked out right right um and you got to ride in it so i i didn't get to ride in it so like what was the car like from the inside it was it was it was a dope experience because it's an S2000 on the toge with some sticky tires, some good suspension, and that thing was hooked up. He was ripping these turns. like You were ripping turds in your pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was ripping turns. I'm ripping turds, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, he was he was getting it. And like just feeling that and being on the toge and like seeing the sides of the mountain and like the lakes and the views all while just ripping in this S2000, it was just like kind of like a pinch me moment right like, surreal what is like, yeah whoa, yeah surreal, I'm here. Like, yeah 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 it was <laughs> so cool and like the sound of an s2000 you know at 9k all motor just, yeah all motor just <laughs> boom, like yeah just, sure. what was it was his <laughs> <name>? <laughs> yeah no i mean vtech and dude like, right <laughs> yeah one <laughs> once you get to experience that right it's like not something that i would assume you would forget anytime soon yeah it uh, was cool so <laughs> we make it up onto the toge and we're we made a few stops. We our first stop was like an overlook at uh Mount Fuji and right. kind of wasn't there also like a some body of water that we could see at that point? Uh not at that point. That at that point it was just like fields and just maybe out in the distance i think it might have been the ocean yeah like on the left yeah yeah, yeah i think that was the ocean but yeah out like way far in the distance you could see fuji but it's covered up in clouds and yeah. also they had like this little model of mount fuji at the lookout spot just yeah, kind of pretty cool yeah it was a good view it was windy very yeah, windy yeah it was windy and uh, if you guys check out our YouTube channel when I post this episode, there will be some um, some video and pictures of these locations, and you'll yeah. be able to see it was for sure windy. Um, but so good views. yeah, good views. And so he he took us on like I don't even know how many runs up and down and around right. this like toge area, yeah. and it it's. Isn't wasn't this toge area the one from uh, initial D? It was one of them. It wasn't. One of them. Yeah, it was. I forget which series yeah. it was, but yeah, it was definitely a famous one where you know some of these some of these uh, animes and stuff had taken place. So that was right really cool he, to get that history. Yeah, and exactly. especially riding in his car when he has like that soundtrack and like. That yeah. music oh, he going. was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet, dude. So, the yeah. full package. Wow. Yeah, it was. It was cool. Dude was jamming out and just loving, loving it, it, dude. Loving it. And so for me personally, um, you know, I'm driving the R34 GTR. Um, my first time driving it more than just like hammering on the Wangan right. or something. You know, like never. I hadn't really taken turns at a high rate of speed or, you know, at high RPMs or anything like that. Right. So it was definitely a little bit of an adjustment for me, but also like you're not doing it alone. You're like, I'm like trying to keep up with this guy. Right. And he like does it all the time. So, yeah, yeah. you know, which it, it was all good and fine. I I didn't crash it. And that was really the, right, the right. big no, thing. Dude, yeah. you did great. You know, yeah. you didn't even cross the yellow line. Like, <laughs> I didn't even cross the yellow line. Yeah. That's, that's the you know, main thing there. Like, but I definitely had some all seasons on there. Yeah. I could feel that and hear oh, yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So that... That was still cool, right? Like a little moment of accomplishment where I was able to keep up with a guy who does this all the time. Granted, I'm sure he wasn't like trying to lose me. Right. So that's like 
you know, maybe the difference. But, but still, it was a fun day. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. And fun time. So he really was able to give me quite a bit of experience on the toge right. and just, you know, made me want more, of course. Right. You know, but um, then we we made a little pit stop. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly where it was, like on the mountain. Right. But it was like another overlook. And it was... And there was a cool ice cream shop, but there was also the helipad was right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was, was sweet. Yeah, I guess they give helicopter tours or something, that, and that's where they their Take bases. Off. Yeah, much. yeah. So you probably must got to meet them up there, and like you know, that's where you leave from. And we kept seeing the helicopter all over the mountain when we yeah. were when we were driving around it. It was pretty cool, and that must have been cool for the people in the helicopter to see us ripping around the mountain as <laughs> Seriously, well. Seriously. Like, yeah. That would be cool. Like an S2000 in the skyline. Like you're just taking this tour and all of a sudden these guys are just Right, like, right, right. Yeah. You can hear them over the helicopter? Literally, no, I don't know about that. But um, not with that super quiet, silent exhaust that they put on my car. But, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but so that was cool. And then he he takes us in and, you know, we, we use the bathroom or whatever. But then he gets us set up so that we are ordering ice cream. Yeah, milk ice cream. Milk ice cream. Milk flavored. In Japanese. Yeah. So, you know, he didn't just let us try to struggle with the English communication. He taught us how to order this in Japanese, and that was, like, important to him that we were learning how to do these things. Yeah. And not just, like, struggling through it. Right. and Dude, I love that. Like, that's so cool. Like... Teach me how I want to learn. Yeah. Know? Okay. So how do you order it again? <laughs> Climo. <laughs> Climo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Un Climo. Un Climo. Yeah. <laughs> or something, yeah. something along those lines. No, we're probably wrong. But still, <laughs> uh, that that was just a, a cool experience and really just showed his character as far as like where his priorities were at with this experience. It's not just like, all right, all right hurry up and get these guys through this, right? So I can go do what I want. Right. It was, let me teach these guys so that they can continue to be successful while they're here. Right, right. Yeah, that was <clears throat> that was cool. It was good ice cream, too. Yeah, it was. Then, it was super dang. And then, dude, we walked outside, the sickest NSX. <laughs> yeah, just chilling. On what wheels? None other than T37. Of course, yeah. <laughs> the only wheels they make in Japan. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this NSX was definitely sweet and um albo knew some stuff about it right you know i think it was the owners he said yeah something, something along like those that. lines because yeah. i remember seeing pictures of it on the inside of that restaurant as well yeah that's right i'm like oh okay yeah this is so ice cream ice cream's hot man yeah <laughs> it's it's fan for an nsx hey. that's dope uh but so we checked that bad boy out and kind of got back on the toge and just kind of kept hammering. Yeah. Like just, just kept on going. He's dude. like, how about another? How about another? Right, you know? right, like, right. We would, holy crap, dude. <laughs> it seemed like we'd go up to a spot and then kind of come back down and then go up further and then come back down and then go further and further. And then, yeah, yeah just kept on going. The turns just kept coming and just. I feel like I peeled four seasons off those things. <laughs> <laughs> four Probably short. close to it, dude. Yeah. Maybe six. <laughs> uh, so it was like. And I, you know, I don't know, my memory is a little foggy, but uh, was the shrine before the high speed or after the high speed? It was speed? after. So he he took oh, us on the, you know, kind of, they're not low speed toge, right. but it's not considered like high speed Right, toge. it's it's tight turns, it's two lane road, it's, it's, it's pretty tight. Like, yeah. only thing that. I could really compare it to in America would be like the tail of the dragon or yeah. you know something like that. Yeah, where where it's like constant reaction and and needing right. to really be in tune with the car. So then he's like, "Well, you want to try some high speed toge?" And I'm like, uh, "Okay, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Right? Yeah. When with elbow, right, right, right. <laughs> you just do it, I guess." So yeah, he is, takes us out, and it's high speed. It's it like top high. of fourth gear, like. like yeah like as fast as you could pretty much go and so for me that was a little less comfortable than like the tight stuff because there's a a little bit more room for error you know when you're coming as fast as you can up to this corner right 
and don't know what's on the other side of it. Right, right. Yeah. And just following this other dude. <laughs> yeah, like, who does it all of, the time. Right, yeah. right. But it was it was still a blast. We you know, it was an experience I definitely would not have done on my own. Right. Like I wouldn't have known that that stretch was the spot to like he's like, All right, let's turn around here. All right, there's no traffic. Hit it. And he yeah, just yeah. like takes off and I'm like, <laughs> Okay, hey buddy, wait. It's the flashers, takes off. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. So uh you know, but again, like cool experience and and for anyone that was around there right then, that must have been so cool to see like like you said, like these two dope cars just yeah. all of a sudden just hammering right. as fast as they possibly can. Like, I wish we had seen that from the opposite perspective, <laughs> right. you know, just to yeah. experience it. But so at this point, we were kind of done with the toge. Like, we we were there for hours and yeah. hours. And we also had made one other stop for, like, coffee and to, like, just to chat and... yeah. You know, Get kind some of Albo stories. Yeah, and then for him to understand who we are and like where we come from and what we do. And so that was a really good experience as far as just being able to get to know each other. Yeah. After literally driving on the toge and like hammering, you right. know, and like doing stuff that a lot of times like friends would do. Right. We're after the fact kind of getting to know each other, yeah. which is maybe the way it should be, right? Yeah. Like, hey, if you can keep up with me on the toge, we can chat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But so, you know, this is when it kind of turned to a little bit more traditional Japan and he, and he really kind of taught us more about the spirituality of yeah. the Japanese uh, culture right and he took us to a shrine i honestly cannot remember the name i can't either yeah but it's that right on a lake though yeah it was on a, it was so cool but that really doesn't matter the name of it doesn't matter it was the experience that we had there um and so we pulled in and we found some parking and he just started kind of taking us along the different parts of this shrine and explaining them to us right right like don't walk in the middle of the of the walkway that's for the gods or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Which like, I never would have known. Side. Right. I, I would have been tromping up and down <laughs> the middle all day. Yeah. So he he kind of just brought us through these different parts and and really broke them down for us. Um, and then so to rewind a little bit, the week prior we had gone to Kyoto and you know gone to those shrines right. and we saw people giving offerings, but we didn't really understand. Like, we didn't understand exactly what was going on. Right. And so when we went to this shrine, Albo really, really broke it down for us and helped us understand what's going on when these people are giving offerings and then in turn helped us give an offering. Right. That which was, cool. was like, yeah, which was super cool because and now at this point we're participating in the Japanese, like, religion quote unquote i mean right. it's not a religion though the way that he explained it so for us to participate where in a place that we like didn't know i don't know it was just yeah. wild like that was for me like just a wild experience to participate like that with japanese people right it was super cool and the way yeah. he broke it down like made it make sense to me you yeah. Know, whereas, like, you know, in America, religion, you have to be religious. Japan, yeah. you don't really, or with that religion, you don't necessarily have to be religious. Yeah. In that sense. It's but not you, like this gripping thing. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. No, I, I thought that that was cool too. It really made me see like a different perspective on the whole thing. Right. Because, right, like you said, maybe in America, it's like you're either religious or you're not. Right. And there's like a, dividing line pretty much yeah. whereas over there it's just like it's just part of their culture and it's just this thing you do but it's not like this overpowering overbearing thing where you have to be somewhere so many days a week and like give yeah right, right. yeah yeah no and so yeah that that was definitely cool to to fully take that in and and have him there to just again guide us right. even though he, he's not a guide but right. he guides you for sure yeah. And so we uh we gave our offerings, yeah. which was really sweet, and then we kept it moving and we walked down to 
as you mentioned, it was like a lake, yeah, right? Yeah, little lake area. Yeah, and he uh, made sure to get our picture, you know, in front of the lake. What are the? What is it called? The big orange things? The gate? Uh, the gate? Yeah, there yeah. was a gate in front of the lake, right? And so that was really cool. It was like you were walking through the gate to the lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he got our picture there, um, and we we kind of just checked everything out, and yeah. we're like, hey, let's like. Keep it moving. Because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we got the charms too. Oh, yeah, the charms. Go ahead. We got the charms, charms to uh, protect us in traffic safety. Traffic it's safety. It's these charms you keep in your car and keeps you safe. They had various other ones, you know. That yeah. What'd you get? Come on. Sp- uh, your I got guts. the one for the car. I got one for um, playing to win. I believe is what the playing translation. Playing to win. Playing yeah. to win, and then the other one was um, evil spirits. Oh, you're warding off the evil spirits? Yeah, had to, you know, you never know. <laughs> is your house haunted? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you have, have that hanging over Maybe your Maybe my car is, I don't know. <laughs> oh, shoot, yeah, your car probably is haunted. I got them all yeah. stacked up in there, so. <laughs> nice, yeah, so I grabbed two of the traffic safety ones, one for the car in Japan and one for the R33 year. So that was cool because that was what he was like really excited about was like yeah. oh did you guys get any charms what you didn't get any charms yeah, yeah like yeah. we got to get you guys charms right, right, you right. know so that was really cool and and again just like tied us into the japanese way of life even more yeah like so it was cool. just one more step yeah. of like tying us in so that felt really good and so you know at this point we're looking to probably get some food right oh yeah 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 Yeah. we we had to back down the mountain yeah and that was a sweet view yeah like it was beautiful you head back down the mountain and at one point you can just see everything we were lucky enough to be in traffic at that point yeah that's true yeah (laughs) yeah so we kind of could be slow seeing it um Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention how I made you, like, feel kind of carsick in the toge because I was driving like such a hot boy. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to mention that. I didn't want anyone to take it the wrong way, but, uh, yeah, the few rides with Albo smoothed me out, and we were good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. Hey, listen, you know, when you're in an all-wheel drive uh, car from hell, that's what happens. You get sick. <laughs> But yeah, so we were trying to find some food and Albo had a few places in mind. Um, the first one ended up, it was going to be like a super long wait. Yeah, I like think it was hours. like all you can eat Wagyu or something yeah. like that. And it was it was backed up. So yeah, yeah we headed to the next one and uh, it happened to be a conveyor belt sushi. Yep, the conveyor sushi. So our first, first experience with that. and Yeah, well, and see, when we were talking about him like kind of cutting time off and and all that like he walked in there and he knew exactly what to do he knew yeah how to reserve you know everything right and it took like no time whereas if we walked in there for the first time we literally would have stood there yeah 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 i would 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 have no clue like uh what yeah what do we do here what's the screen here let me pull out my google translate let me read yes look like like dingalings but instead he just kind of Cut it all short for us, and and that really, again, was like a huge benefit. Yeah. But so, yeah, we're conveyor belt sushi, something we had heard of, hadn't had yet. Right. Yeah, and so he was like, "Yeah, usually me and my homies like try to see how many plates we can eat." <laughs> and we're like, "Well, what do, what do you mean? You know, like, yeah. yeah, okay." And this dude was stacking plates up like I had never seen. Yeah, like, because you make everything like there's just this screen in front of you and whatever you want, you just click through and, you know, you can just keep going and keep going and keep going. As, you know, yeah, you can just keep not ordering. Gonna stop you. <laughs> you can just keep ordering, dude. And yeah, I, I went pretty hard. There was a few plates where there was like eight pieces of tuna or something on there. And I just, I ordered two or three of them because it was just so good. I'm like, yes, another, yes, another. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was pretty how, wild. Why could I not? <laughs> but it was like a good time. Cause again, like the guy definitely has a good personality. So, yeah, and he knows how to make an experience fun, but not like overwhelming, so to speak. So, right. Yeah, that was really cool. Our first conveyor belt uh, sushi experience. And yeah, I mean, I think at that one, 
him and I both ended up with 13 plates or something. Yeah. And you had a few less, but it's because you got the combo plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah the big big ones, yeah. yeah. So we're just going to say that we all tied. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was a lot. But, dude, my favorite part was when we went to leave and the bill was like 20 bucks. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> That was crazy. Like, we're expecting so to, like, drop some dough, right, because all these plates are stacked up and, like, yeah. we have no room to eat because there's plates everywhere. And... Yeah, twenty bucks or so, whatever like, you know, yeah, maybe twenty five. Not much. Yeah, not like, much at all. And and that was cool because, right? Like three dudes can go out for whatever seventy five bucks. Yeah, for three of them and yeah. eat until they're stuffed. Stuffed. Yeah, and so the cool part with Albo is that wasn't it. It wasn't over. Um, at that point, he's like, "Hey, you want to like you want to go to Big Bang and drive some drift carts?" And we're like. Sure. Yeah, we were there last week. Let's hit it. Yeah. You know, like maybe we got enough practice that we'll be able to like keep up with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, hey, much love to Alvo, but I got to be real. We went and it it was it was a blast. There was not any time that it was not fun. Oh, yeah, it was 100% fun. We were in the, the janky carts for sure. Oh, yeah. And, and if you listen to an earlier episode, you know, you'll hear about the Americana and how they still have, like, you know, 15-inch tube TVs, yeah, like, on the ceiling. pictures of Ricky Rudd on the wall. Yeah, Ricky Rudd and Rusty <laughs> Wallace or whatever, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we get out on the track, and, and like I said, I'm like, all right, maybe we're going to be able to keep up with Albo because, like, you know... It's just seeing his yeah. driving on the toge. He's a freaking toge master. Yeah. You know, but we get out there and no, he must have had the cart that just the yeah. wheel was on backwards I think or something. He did. Yeah. Cause, he definitely did. Because listen, Albo is not joining any drift cart leagues. <laughs> I promise you that. He's got he's got some work to do, but we all do. But yeah, yeah. He, I just found him spinning out every every few seconds. It was a good time though. Yeah, for sure. And he made it uh all fun you know it's not like because he was spinning out he was right, being right. salty we were making anything. bets on sodas and stuff yeah like. yeah and <laughs> yeah he we made a bet where it's like hey whoever wins whoever loses this race buys everybody a drink you know and yeah. and not alcoholic strictly like cc lemons and teas yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. you know so Took we're like the bank on that yeah, one. oh yeah we did dude he <laughs> had to spend everything in his pocket dude we we ran a train on him <laughs> Uh <laughs> no, but we we did we we beat him and it was uh yeah it was just funny because we teased him and he could take a joke which is cool you know yeah he, yeah I was like was this your first time there Alba like yeah, what's going yeah. on he's, he's like, like oh no I've been here before hey come on <laughs> yeah no it, it was cool but um we had a blast and we did like five races or something and uh and you know at that point we were like oh well you know there's probably not much here to do right. You know, and he's like, no, let's go upstairs to the batting cages. And we're like, huh? Haven't swung a bat (laughs) since I was playing t-ball. Yeah, 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 no (laughs) doubt. Like, and so we're like, "Uh, yeah, okay, you know. And we go up there and pretty cool setup. But like, there's one cage per speed. And like, you know. Didn't really uh, realize until after the fact, huh? And all three of us really needed like the lowest speed. But I was like, oh, I'll jump in the second one, you know, whatever. And that one's like 90-something yeah, yeah. miles an hour. Kilometers. Kilo- yeah, yeah, what, yeah. I don't still, know. Still fast. It's way faster than I'm hitting anything. <laughs> so I'm like swinging my shoulders out just trying to connect with one of these. Seriously, you know? me yeah. too. But it was cool because, again, it was something that we hadn't done before that we now had done, right? Yeah. And he, he like introduced us to that instead of just moving on to the next thing he right. took it one more step which again like his experience you know his experience is awesome because he does little things like that right right and yeah. he, he like definitely packs it all in dude. oh it's yeah cool. yeah like there's not i mean there's like it's weird because there's like time to hang out but like not a bunch of time to hang out so right. like it's a great mix. Right. You know, and there was, it was never lack of something to talk about because we didn't just sit around and talk the whole time. Right. So, um, we finished up throwing our shoulders out and (laughs) we, at that point we had thought about, we were gonna go to Daikoku. Right. But But it had got shut down. Yeah. And he had, he had gotten a message from 
someone that had said, hey, it was just shut down. And I can remember that was at like 9.44 p.m. Yeah. or something, right? Yeah. Mind you, the camper's still parked there. <laughs> yeah, the camper's still parked there, which you'll hear in, in the last episode about how all that happened. But, you know, it's 9.44 and I'm like, oh, man, like, all right, well, this guy's probably going to shut it down. Yeah. Like, it's 9.44. We've been going at this since you know, nine, whatever AM, yeah. 12 hours, like decent. Right? Yeah. 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 It was all day affair all day. And then he's like, Hey, like you want to hit the C1 loop? Yeah. And I'm like, the C1 loop? <laughs> <laughs> like what? What's that? Like, uh, I'm like, I don't know, you know? And he's like, Oh, it's like a high speed loop through downtown Tokyo. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and if, if you play Gran Turismo, uh, special stage route five is, modeled after the c1 loop uh, I and i could definitely see that riding around the place yeah just going through downtown like in between all the buildings right, right. Like through these was, tunnels and like through these like yeah. interchanges and stuff it, it was it was cool yeah and for sure again especially like, at night check out the youtube uh channel because i have videos of us going through this that i'll put over the podcast so you can see them yeah um so we hit the C1 loop. It's like high speed. He gives us a heads up where all of the cameras are. Right. It was like set up. It was cool. We did like a bunch of runs through there, like four or five laps around the C1 loop. Yeah. And then we pulled over underneath like this um, bridge. And, you know, at this point it's like 11 something. Yeah. And he's like, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean... We kind of did everything, like, <laughs> you know, like he wasn't really like necessarily trying to end it, but also didn't want to overdo it on our behalf. Right, right. You know, so uh, it it was like really cool. Like, again, like I hate to overuse the word, but it was like super surreal at the end. Like both of our cars sitting under this bridge yeah. with the four ways on with us just chatting, taking right. some photos and like saying thank you, you know, yeah. because he really did like put in a ton of effort and you know by the end of it like we just felt like friends you yeah. know it just felt like the homie yeah it yeah. was cool he's such a cool dude and <laughs> his experience over there is yeah dude second to none i mean in my eyes cuz yeah i don't see anyone else really offering that type of experience especially Not so that personal. Like, right that's the thing like personal with him and like just showing you all the little secrets pretty much. Yeah, exactly. And and so yeah, the education was worth it, let alone yeah. the experience, you know, just because I left that feeling a little tiny bit more integrated into the Japanese culture. Yeah. You know. Yeah, just, absolutely. So did I. Yeah. So if you're going to Japan, hit up Albo, see what his schedule is, see if he can fit you in. You definitely will not regret it. Um, no, it's not free, but it's well worth it. Yeah. The money that you spend is, you could not spend the same amount of money anywhere else in our experience and get that same type of like care and personability, like the whole right. thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're into the Japanese car culture and like you're into that, it's well worth it. Yeah. Especially if you can't speak Japanese. Yeah, because like, that alone, like, you got your personal translator. Right, there. right. That alone was like, okay, this dude knows everything. Or, you know, in that sense, he knows, he can talk to anyone, he can read all this stuff. Like, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, it was... Well worth it. On point. And uh, so, yeah, we just want to make sure we say thank you, Elbow, and... Uh, and yeah, we look forward to next time, Absolutely. you know, getting back together. Uh, I know he is about to have his first child. Congratulations oh, yeah, to congrats. him. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, this pretty much wrap, wraps up episode 16 of the Right Hand Drive Guys, A Day With Elbow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm Bobby. This is Aaron. See ya. Adios.